hello students so in this lecture we will learn a new concept of uh, amplification and transistors that is the concept of faithful amplification and biasing this was the topic that was asked by some students who have to do practicals uh, of transistor biasing but before you are doing the practical or before you are using the amplifier or the C transistor or any transistor configuration for amplification, you must know these concepts that what is faithful amplification and how to obtain faithful amplification. So let us start our topic. To start the topic, I will start with an example of a given circuit and then we will better understand what is going on and what we are required to do. Suppose you are provided a circuit over here, the diagram I am giving you, this is the circuit and you are asked to obtain the operating point and draw the <coughs> DC load line. Now from the circuit I have told you how to identify the configuration and I think you can identify, you can tell me in the comment. Suppose this circuit is given and you are given this question to find the Q point, you can call the operating point or working point and draw the load line DC load line load line DC how to proceed now first you have to understand I told you in the previous lecture that to draw the Q point you must first locate the saturation point and the cutoff point then you will join these two, two points with a line saturation point and cutoff point cut off <coughs> point you have to locate this now how you can locate this the answer is very simple you should not wonder wh how can we find what is given only the circuit is given how can I find the these two points answer is very simple this answer is that I told you that the cutoff point is that point where the collector emitter voltage I have intentionally taken this configuration so that I can tell you something more. The, at the cutoff point VC is equal to VCC and you know that the DC load line is drawn on a particular voltage current graph. The value of voltage and value of current. Okay. So this is the VCE and this is the VCE. When they are equal the transistor is at cutoff point. So at cutoff point you have the point on the x axis at cutoff point the you can say the q point is on x axis on the voltage axis is on voltage axis this is the significance so from here you can see vcc is 20 volts so vcc is 20 volt sorry it, it is volt not millivolt this is 20 volts so on the x axis you have located the point 20 volt VCE this is the cutoff point now the next job is to find the saturation point you have to remember what happens at the saturation point is that the current is maximum what happens at saturation point saturation point current is maximum at saturation point current is maximum and it is equal to saturation point the collector current is equal to I have told you in the previous lecture it is equal to VCC by load resistance let me paste the diagram here also so that you can relate easily this is the diagram so VCC by RL put the values IC is equal to VCC is 20 volt and load resistance is 5 kilo ohm when a 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 you can easily evaluate this and that will be the value of IC so now you are in a position to to locate the uh, saturation point and the cutoff point saturation point is the value of current cutoff point is the value of the voltage so this one is 20 volts this is VCB because this configuration is different from uh, CE and this is the cutoff 
and here you have the saturation you have located these two points and now you draw the straight line so this is the dc load line i have told you why it is called load line now the problem is how to locate how to find out the q point you cannot uh, put the q point arbitrarily you must remember that Q point is nothing but the value of current and voltage. Q point is the value of current and voltage without any input AC signal. Value of current and voltage. Input voltage and output current voltage without any input now understand this thing very properly and concentrate without any input i will write in brackets ac this is just the biasing the way you bias the emitter base junction and the collector base junction it defines or it it defines the way the transistor will work for amplification, it is necessary that the emitter base is forward biased, the collector base is reverse bias, and this type of biasing is given here in the active region. I have told you this one is the active region. So, Q point is not an ordinary point. You cannot put the Q point arbitrarily anywhere in the line. Q point is the point that shows that shows the proper biasing because in the active region proper biasing as in the active region in the active region emitter base is forward biased and collector base is reverse bias now this condition, this type of biasing is not enough for amplification. This defines the condition for amplification, but it is still not the complete condition. There are certain conditions. I am telling you wh what are the conditions. Now from this circuit, so from the load line I have shown you, you have to find the, this is the load line that you have drawn. So your first thing is solved. First work is complete now where the q point lies now to calculate the q point what we will do is we will find the emitter current and the collector current and then we will use the equation which equation let me show you to find q to find q we find ie which is vee -E by rl now the circuit diagram again you see the circuit diagram over here what is the circuit diagram let me give, paste it here you can get these types of problems in any book in uh, millman halkias and other books so this is the circuit diagram so vee is 30 volts vee is 30 volts 30 volts and the RL, it is 5 kilo ohms. RL is 5 kilo ohms. Sorry, RE is RE. You have to take the RE value because it is a different configuration. RE, here it is RE. And RE is 15 kilo ohms. Now you can find IE. Now, for Q point, we require IC. How can we get IC? The simple equation that take, tells you how to get IC is the alpha equation IC is equal to IE times alpha. Alpha will be given to you. You can use that value of alpha. Now to find the VCB, you use this equation VCC minus ICRL. So you have found IC, RL is given, VCC is given. You can find the value of VCC. Now this VCC, sorry VCB, this VCB and the value of IE can, will determine the Q point. If you solve this equation putting this value, it comes out to be approximately 10 volts and 
टू मिली एम्पियर दिस इज टू मिली एम्पियर and this is 10 volt so this is the q point now try to understand what this q point is saying if this is the q point with 10 volts and 2 milli amperes means this is the voltage and current at which the transistor is operating at which the transistor is operating now when we will apply the ac input AC is varying with time and uh, AC is varying with the in terms of direction also. So for the transistor to work properly in the active region, you have to establish an operating point or you have to find the appropriate voltage and current. Then only you then only you will apply the external AC. This means at this value, at this value of current and voltage, Q point is a value of current and voltage at which, at which the transistor is in active region. The transistor not in the active region will work. That is why it is called working point. Now, when we will do the experiment. it is necessary to provide appropriate direct potentials and currents using these external sources so when you are connecting this transistor you have to ensure that your dc voltage is 10 volts and the collector current is 2 milliampere this is the value that is appropriate when you have found a, found the q point now you can apply the time varying input signal may be base current or that can cause an output that can produce an output of proper manner so this means this means after q point is established after q point is established then only we can apply we can apply ac that has to be amplified that has to be amplified so first you need to find out the q point that is why it is very necessary in any experiment you have to find the q point first and i have told you how to find the q point now the output signal must be of the same form of the input signal this is called faithful amplification so faithful amplification means faithful amplification faithful amplification means means the output wave form the output wave form is of the same shape as the input same same shape as the input now what i mean to say is that suppose the input signal is of this form it is a sine wave and the output is output is of this form suppose it is this form then it is unfaithful this is not proper amplification because it was a sine wave and the output is not a sine wave it has been clipped it has some portions have been removed faithful amplification means faithful amplification means the output will be same will have same shape at the input as the input form the only thing is that the, if this wave form will be amplified so the peaks will be higher this is the proper faithful amplification but if the shape is changing suppose the sine input is sine output is cosine or output not exactly cosine some some portions have been cut off then it is not faithful this is not proper amplification so proper amplification is very essential 
तो इम्प्रॉपर एम्प्लीफिकेशन मे कॉज क्लिपिंग और रिमूवल ऑफ सम पोर्शन ऑफ द इनपुट सिग्नल so if this is occurring if your amplification you are observing that the amplification is not proper then what you have to do the operating point is unsatisfactory and it should be reloaded or it should be relocated on the collect collector characteristic if the amplification is amplification is not proper not proper then q point has to be relocated or recalculated has to be relocated this is what you have to do this is the important thing that you have to do now the question arises how to locate the operating point how to find out the proper operating point because if you are uh, if your operating point is not proper if the current and uh, have voltage values are not proper then what will happen some part of the input signal will be removed or clipped off this is the main concept now what happens is that let us see what is uh, distorted or unfaithful significance this amplification now let us take this example suppose in a circuit you have drawn the saturation drawn the dc load line this is ic this is vce and your q point is located here so what is happening here is that your q point or the value of current and i collector current and collector emitter voltage they are close to the cut off so what will happen in this case this will happen this will cause the effect that if q point is located near the cut off the signal first starts to clip at the point a you can see the point a the positive peak here the signal will be cut off this portion will be removed and the output will be improper if q point is near is near cut off then the positive peak of input ac of input ac will be clipped i have told you about clip clipping clipped means removed i will not write cut off because it will cause confusion will be removed the output will be something like this this portion is removed so this is improper amplification why it is occurring so because as soon as you are applying the ac signal the positive swing of the signal takes the transistor to the cut off region and in this case your operating voltage is near the cut off region so actually what is occurring here the input signal the positive and negative peaks these peaks are starting the transistor suppose your operating voltage is q point it is as a, as in the previous example it was 20 volts and 2 milliampere you are applying an ac signal whose peak value is suppose uh, 30 volts so this 30 volt this maximum positive peak is larger than this uh, 20 volts the transistor is operating at 20 volts and you are applying 30 volts so 10 volt part will be cut off this is the simple explanation this means this q point has to be relocated the positive swing the positive swing drives the transistor drives the transistor to cut off point and the there is clipping of the signal clipping or cutting of the signal of the input signal 
so the q point has to be changed q point has to be changed this q point is not proper so depending on the q point you have to apply the signal or if you have a signal of fixed quantity you have to check whether the q point is proper or not in this case the maximum positive swing let me paste the diagram here the maximum positive swing is positive swing means voltage is voltage is v is equal to i r it is i c q i c q means the value of the collector current at this point and the r a c means the resistance equivalent to a c so if this voltage it is not in accordance with the q point voltage if v suppose this is v1 is not matching with vq then amplification is not proper and your signal is distorted is not proper and the output is distorted this is what is happening output is distorted now v is generally it is icq and rac so this voltage should be accommodated accommodated here the diagram as it is saying if this is the value of the voltage the uh, the input voltage or the q point should be located such that the full swing is covered if the full swing is not covered if it is like this then this much portion is clipped off this will not appear in the output output absent this means your q point choice is not proper this is the significance of q point now suppose in a second situation i i will again draw the diagram so that i can explain you mo in a more better way now suppose in a second situation you have your q point here at the top so you can see this is the saturation point this one is the saturation point and your q point is lying here suppose its value is again 20 volts and 2 milliampere so what will happen in this case now see on this side in the q point side you have the negative peak you have the negative peak if this voltage is not proper if this if this quantity is not proper then what will happen at the output some portion of the out negative peak will be cut off or chopped off this will be the output again distorted this is distorted unfaithful so what happens if q point is located near the saturation point the clipping starts at point b at the negative peak because the transistor is going to saturation it is the maximum it is conduct it is conducting the maximum current it cannot go in any further change so maximum negative swing is vcq maximum negative swing is vceq the value of vce at q now what what is happening here if this point is not proper if this point is not at the correct position what will happen you have to fit this input ac in this region the input ac this is the significance of q point i hope i have been able to explain you if you have some question please ask in the comment section the input has to be fit in the region in this region you have to fit the input ac if suppose i am drawing a rough diagram here this is the load line and your q point is here and this is what is happening in this region in this particular region your 
AC should fit. Now suppose this region is such that it is like this. So this much portion will be clipped. This much portion of the AC will be clipped, clipped and your output will be of the form like this. This is the upper, upper part is okay, the lower part is removed improper or distorted signal. This is the significance of the Q point. So you have to find the Q point first before performing your experiment. Now suppose you have our Q point in the middle of the DC load line. Here you have you have your Q point. Now you can see here <coughs> what we need we need amplification that the input signal we are applying this input signal if this is input the output should be amplified and of proper shape so this region it should be such this gap should be such between the ic and the vc the saturation and the cutoff the space i am using very simple language that this space, this region of x-axis or the voltage, it should be such that it can accommodate the two times the input AC signal. So your Q, so, so your Q point should be in the middle. So what I tend to say, when Q point is in the middle of, in the middle of the load line load line then what happens then the voltage axis voltage axis so it is when voltage axis these types of mis spelling mistakes occur because we are when we are teaching we are in a flow so many times it happens that spellings are not proper so please don't mind it mind this then the voltage and load line then the voltage axis has enough space enough space to accommodate or to fit to accommodate or to fit two times the input signal two times vi input voltage so the maximum possible output signal is maximum possible out uh, because it is written in the book you have you many times it is difficult to understand maximum possible output voltage is two times vceq is two times the voltage on the x axis c voltage at q point the voltage at q point so when the q point is in the middle then it can accommodate or it can amplify two times the voltage at the q point whatever voltage you have at this point q at this point q suppose it is 20 volt now in the amplify in this section it can accommodate 40 volt without distortion so if the input is ac output will be always ac so what we conclude for proper amplification proper amplification or faithful amplification amplification or faithful amplification amplification the q point should be in the middle of the DC load line in the middle of DC load line and I have told you in the previous lecture that VCE should be equal to half VCC so this thing is justified here this thing is proved here when you have your Q point at the middle of the load line this means if this is your line and your Q point is lying exactly at the middle. So this value is half VCC. Half is lying here, half is lying here. This is the active region. Here you can get the amplification. Elsewhere you cannot get any amplification. 
so this is what we have concluded now let us come to the next start topic i am starting this biasing a transistor biasing a transistor biasing a transistor now what does this mean the first thing that we have to keep in mind that we initially we studied that biasing a transistor means emitter base should be should be forward biased collector base should be reverse biased this is the primary condition without this biasing you cannot get any amplification however in addition to these two conditions these two conditions are not enough the condition is that these two, what these two, two conditions are saying it is saying that the emitter base should be forward biased means you know the meaning of forward bias collector base, base should be reverse bias now biasing means applying voltage i have told you in the diode lecture also biasing means applying external voltage applying external voltage now the question arises if you are given a transistor if you are given a circuit with a transistor how much what is the value of emitter bias voltage what is the value of collector bias voltage that you have to apply you have to measure these voltages by some instrument how will you measure what are the proper values you don't know so there is a need of biasing now what are the additional needs the additional need is that this q point that has we, that we have seen how to calculate to get the desired q point we need to bias we need to apply proper biasing so biasing means in simple words biasing means to apply proper voltages proper voltages of course dc voltages to the transistor to the transistor so that we can get we can get a proper value of q now what is a proper value of q i will tell you what are other conditions of q if you are not uh, if the transistor is not biased properly it will not work efficiently your output signal will be distorted the if, next important thing is that so let me write this thing which is not required these are the two problems that may occur if you do not uh, bias the transistor properly now the next most important thing is that whenever you have found the q point that q the main condition is that the q point should remain stable it should not change its position due to effects like temperature but there are changes in the position of the q point and that affects the transistor working q point should be stable and should not be affected should not be affected by the most important factor is temperature you can guess how that how this temperature is coming into play <coughs> so this is the main impo important condition now what are the factors that affect the bias variations now what happens when you are doing the practical and you have done everything very accurately you have added this you have joined the circuit you have calculated the q point everything is all right but this q point shows to change shows some change in position this is instability in the bias and it is mainly due to the heating or the temperature or the thermal instability that produces increase in the ic if it is not checked if it is not uh, corrected it leads to an effect which is called thermal runaway i will discuss in this section 
Q point changes. Now you should remember that Q point is a point whose coordinates are VCE and IC. This IC is affected by temperature by minority charge carriers. So if this is affected, Q point will be affected. Q point changes with temperature as IC changes. So it will change its, so there will be a shift in the position. There will be shift in Q point position. And this is going to produce adverse effect in the experiment, in your analysis, in your calculations. So this has to be taken care of. Now the collector current which is the, I have told you that it is the current due to, there is a contribution of minority charge carriers or leakage current also. In most of the cases, the collector current is given by, you can obtain this equation, you know this equation IC is, I is equal to IE plus IB. This IC is generally given by beta times IB plus ICEO. Now this factor is very important. And this ICEO, you can further uh, reduce it, you can further uh, find it in terms of beta. It is beta IB plus 1 plus I beta plus ICEO. This equation we have, let me write it here, it is not properly visible. 1 plus o beta ICEO. I have shown this derivation most probably I remember. If, if not, you can tell me or you can derive this easily. So this ICEO is a very important parameter and it is affecting the collector current. There are three variables. Beta is variable, base current is variable, leakage current is variable and all these factors change with temperature. And the most significant change occurs in the leakage current ICO that causes power dissipation. As the temperature is increasing, IC is increasing. And this leads to a very important effect thermal runaway. Beta, IB and ICO all change with temperature. all change with temperature. The overall effect is thermal runaway or thermal runaway, not it is thermal runaway, it is thermal run away. I will explain what is this factor. Thermal run away means you are running away from somewhere. So all these factors are adversely affecting. We have to check these things. We have to modify the circuit so that you can control the IC, you can get stability, you can get proper amplification. So in the next lecture we will discuss about the stability factor and the stabilization bias stabilization circuits and the relevant calculations. For the time being, stay connected, like, share and subscribe the videos. Thank you.